So it's a great honor to introduce Professor Nick Rosenblum, who will be speaking on conformal blocks and fungi. Thanks very much. Um, so I, what I thought I'd start out with, in some sense, this is a kind of a continuation of Nikolai's talk from earlier um, in the quarter. So I, what I thought to do is to kind of recast what he was talking about in kind of more conceptual and abstract terms. And so, uh, write the title of my talks. Gee. So ultimately, I want to use this kind of whole formalism to say something interesting about Bunji. For instance, uh, we'll be able to prove, hopefully, the, uh, like what functions, what global functions are on Bunji. Uh, that's uh, kind of the most basic question you can ask about a space. We've been studying this for a while, and well, what is it? Uh, but before that, sort of, sort of kind of infinitesimal structure. So Nikolai talked about uh, sort of the jet spaces. So let me remind you, or let me say something about uh, what jet spaces are. And, um, again, so if you have X, a, I don't know, let's say a stack, uh, then the, uh, then, and you have a point, uh, then the, well, let me just pass to the, right away to the infinite order jet. J sub x at x, an infinite jet space. And so we'll see it has a natural filtration. So this is this is this is always equal to this is functions uh, on the formal complete, the formal neighborhood at x. I mean, more or less by definition. What do you think jets are? Well. Whatever formal completion means, the jets of functions at a point is functions on the formal completion. Um, so, uh, there, so first of all, there's a, uh, uh, already this came up in Nicholas talk, which is deformation theory. So, to every x of x is a stack, and x is a point. To this, we can associate a well a DG Lie algebra. Oh. L sub x. Uh, let me not call it that. T sub x comma x shifted by minus one, which is the which is the tangent complex at this point shifted by minus one. That's the underlying vector space. A non-trivial theorem is that this has an, uh, a, I guess, uh, Lurian prism. Uh, is that this has a um, a structure of a D Julie algebra, and in this case, uh, and using this, we can identify so and the functions on the formal completion. So the idea is that this Lie algebra knows everything there is to possibly know about the formal completion at this point. Uh, in particular, it knows about the functions, and uh, namely the functions, the jets, is the Chevrolet Eilenberg, I believe, the Chevrolet Eilenberg co-chains uh, of, um, of this Lie algebra. So let me rewrite it. It'll be convenient to rewrite it as you take Chevrolet Eisenberg chains and you dualize. We'll see why later. Um, so this is this is functions. This is before dualize. It's this pre-dual is the distributions. Uh, on uh, in many ways, this is a kind of a more natural and more well-behaved object to work. Uh, so this is this 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 is this is how that works. Uh, so in the case right away, say of point G, 
No, no, it's visible. How far down is visible? What's that? It's okay. This is okay? For me, yes. <laughs> What's that? For me, yes. Okay. All right. Well, it certainly works well. So, yes, you have I'll, a I'll, I'll, well, I'll move to a different board anyway. Uh, for now. So, in the case of Bungie, favorite, our favorite stack. Oh, yeah. Notice now, because I'm in this kind of derived world, I don't need to pass to the course moduli space or assume that G is uh, semi simple or anything like that. Oh, uh, well, if I have a point, G, this tangent space, G shifted by minus one, this Lie algebra, is just the cohomology. I'm going to start, stop writing R soon of uh, our curve with coefficients in the adjoint. So this, because G has a structure of a Lie algebra, this, uh, this homology has the structure of a DG Lie algebra, and this is the DG Lie algebra governing this uh, infinitesimal structure uh, of, uh, uh, of Bungie. Okay, that's great. Uh, the other thing to say, so uh, in Nicholas' talk, we saw another description of this involving powers of the curve and so on. So one thing that I want to, one thing that I'll do uh, in a minute is kind of give a conceptual recasting of what that, what that means. Um, uh, as you'll see, it'll have actually very little to do with Bungie itself. It's just some kind of a formal, a very formal statement uh, about some formal structures. Uh, but before I do that, I want to kind of set up a goal. The goal is not to do that. Uh, the goal is to kind of globalize. Uh, is to globalize this, globalize and just a kind of a description, a kind of powers max description. The jet space, uh, okay, e on G. And let me just say what I mean by this. What does it mean to globalize? Well, we by globalize, I, I want some statement that does not depend on the point. So what does it mean to give a statement that doesn't depend on the point? Well, uh, jet spaces, as it turns out, also already came out, are very closely related to, to the to differential operators. So let me, uh, so I think that if for the first time in the seminar, this came up in Carol's talk last week, that D modules you can think of as incoherent sheaves on the Durham stack. I'm not sure that was discussed, unfortunately. Uh, was it? Yes. Oh, you, 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 you talked about it. Yes. No, no, so, no, I know, but before that, was there? Uh, oh, okay, so you, did, you didn't talk no, about it. No, I didn't get to it. Okay. Uh, yeah, in particular, I don't think there was any justification for why that has anything to do uh, with, uh, with D modules, as was discussed uh, in the earlier talk. But let me take that for granted for a minute. Or already, alternatively, if you believe in this relationship with jet spaces, hopefully this will be convincing. Uh, so in any case, we have our, we have our stack. It admits a natural map to the dormant. So. The um the key point in sort of comparing everything is that if you take the fiber product of X with itself over the drone stack, this has a very nice description. This is the formal completion uh, of the product of X with itself at the diagonal. Completion. means that, well, we have these functors uh, between int coherent sheaves on X 
and incoherent sheaves on X their own. Uh, we call this, we call this Q. So let me go with that notation for now. Uh, so, uh, so we have Q, uh, this forgetful functor. Oh, whoops. X and uh, and the left hand is called the lower star. This is induction. So, of course, if you believe in this business about, uh, if you believe in this, if you believe that this is supposed to be. Uh, if, the, you believe, if you believe that this really deserves to be called D modules, then this induction, well, we know what that looks like. It's tensoring with the ring of differential. Except there's a little bit of a caveat. So the way that this int code presents itself uh, is it's naturally, it's a, it, the, the natural, the, like in the theory of D modules, uh, there's left D modules and right D modules. So the two categories are abstractly equivalent, but the way they realize as underlying into coherent or quasi coherent sheaves uh, on, the, on the space is different. They differ by tensoring by the dualized. So the, the slight subtlety here is that these are naturally right. So this is supposed to be tensoring by the right version of D, which is, of course, D tensor omega. D tensor, the dualized. So, but now uh, what I want to explain from this point of view is what we have. A nice exercise in thinking it through about what the Jerome stack is, which is that if you have a point that the uh, uh, that this infinite jet space is well, you take uh, you take the you take the ring of differential operators, you take the differential operators, uh, and you just look at the and you just look at the fiber dax, and you take its you take its dual. Uh, so that so, so very naturally differential operators are pre-dual for uh, for this guess. So let me let me give you a proof of this fact. Proof. So that at least they'll have proved something. Uh, well, the point is that uh, uh, this well, let's just consider this diagram. Of x formal completion the diagonal. It's a projection. X one two projection back to x. There's our point x. So we're going to consider. So here's the point that this guy, this guy. Is naturally isomorphic to well. You start with you start with omega. You, you pull it back here. You push it forward here, which this well, by base change. This is the same thing as this q u lower star omega u upper shrink. So this is the this is the induced uh this is the induced d module. Maybe let me write a dx tensor omega. So this is induction from omega to the d modules. And then well, we have this inclusion. And then we shrink restrict. This is this is by definition uh this slide. The reason for shrink rather than start is because we to cancel out this tensoring by omega. Okay, great. And so now well we can apply base change. And we can compute the fiber product. And the key point here is that the fiber product is exactly the formal completion. Uh, I, the, so therefore, so by base change, this is isomorphic to this I tilde upper shriek. Uh, 
Sorry. Omega X followed by the lower star. Okay, what is this? Well, this is this. This thing is just the dualizing complex of this thing is just the dualizing complex uh, of this thing. And well, this and so we're taking the the push forward of the dualizing complex, which uh well, in terms of the Lie algebra, I, I guess I should have said over here, which is that, uh, I don't know, P R gamma info. So, well, this guy is part of how this works, is the R gamma info of uh, omega. And this guy is, 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 is whoops. Is Lie algebra homology? You can cancel out these duals. Let me write it like this. Sorry about that. Very poor board work. Uh, so now, well, this is exact. So now we we arrive that this is exactly this uh, Lie algebra homology. Of this, uh, of this, yeah. okay. So, well, which we which we exactly said was the pre-dual uh, of infinite jets. So, well, so so now we we sort of understand that jets fit into this. Well, it has a nice pre-dual that fits globally on this thing. So, uh, so the goal will be to describe. Uh, D of Bungie. Yes, that is always the case. Uh, I guess I should have said the way this works is that um, uh, modules over this are the same thing as incoherent sheets on the formal completion. Uh, the lower star functor, of course, and the lower star functor is given by the algebra homology, Chevalier Allenberg chains. Uh, uh, this, it's, ah, and the, the dualizing complex is just the trivial module, which explains this isomorphism, because, because global functions are also the same thing as hum from omega to omega. Uh, so, uh, no, when you, when you, when you, I think, do you need any sort of bias to come up on the stacks? Uh, oh, yeah. So, 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 so our stack, so my stack is locally almost a finite type. Uh, indeed. Absolutely do need everything. Everything in sight will be, will be this. And, and really, and really what I mean to, and I only said stack just to assume representability for no good reason. All I need is for it to have kind of deformation theory or probably what you would call pro-deformation theory. Uh, but anyway, it's like a pre-stack with deformation theory. No descent is actually needed. Uh, extremely general. Uh, so, 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 so the goal is to describe D modules, G, which will globalize, the, which will globalize uh, this description of jet spaces which I guess I have yet to describe, but as what? Well, most simply is, you know, we want to encode all of its algebra structures. It's a little tricky to say what uh, category for like a, for, for, for a stack. It's a little bit tricky to say what the category, the D, the algebra of differential operators, what category it's an algebra. Not impossible, but uh, a little bit tricky. But uh, the, the simplest answer is as a monad, Uh, on the coherent trees on Bungie. This will be the, the so this will be kind of the, the goal that will globalize this description of jet spaces. So in particular, it's an algebra in endofunctors of this kind. It's you can upgrade it to various things, but in particular that that's the most interesting structure. Okay, 
And this is this is this is this is where we're going. And then we'll see some application methods uh, where, as as promised, where for instance we'll compute uh, functions on one G. In some cases, yeah. I get. I mean, kind of implicit in this goal is like you want to describe it in terms that are local on the curve. Yes. Yeah. 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 Uh, uh, I guess in terms not involving. Uh, the modulate space. Uh, I'll, 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 I'll say what I mean. Uh, I mean, I mean, I'll, for, I'll formulate it precisely. Uh, maybe, if, maybe before I do that, uh, well, let me just let me continue. So, uh, so okay, yeah, this is this is where we're going. Great. Any questions? Uh, great. Now, this is the point in the talk where I apologize because I have to introduce a button. You know, the title involves words like conformal blocks, so I have to introduce at least some context where that's a notion that makes sense. So, I, there's no way to do this except to give some definition. So, please bear with me. The specifics won't be super important, and, you know, it's a little hard to give a kind of a comprehensive. I, I will give nothing close to a comprehensive uh, You know, it would take possibly, you know, you can easily run a whole semester long uh, thing about uh, factorization algebras and their applications to Bungie. Uh, but this, this is not that seminar. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. But uh, um, but well so 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 anyway so let me say first let me say what a chiral algebra is. So this is a uh, if the word vertex algebra is familiar, which I don't assume that it is, it's a kind of a coordinate free definite a coordinate free notion of what a vertex algebra is. So the setup is like this: x will be now a curve, um, and uh, so I'm supposed to give. A chiral algebra, so I won't give a complete definition. X B module well, I hope this has already been said in previous talks, this clutter. By default, everything is derived. So when I say uh, so when I say D module, I mean in the derived category. I'll write a little bit. I mean, uh, uh, if I mean a uh, plot, you know, the usual notion, the non-derived version. So, so it's a D module together with it comes with a funny operation called the chiral bracket. So where uh, uh, where so J is the map from J is the complement of the diagonal inside the square and delta. Delta is the diagonal. Uh, so there's an operation like this, and it's a it's a it's a Lie operation. Let me write it in quotes, which is a Lie bracket. Maybe let me in parentheses even just to, uh, just to, for emphasis that this has to be homotopic from here. Whatever that means. Uh, so, well, let me let me say a few words about what this means. So, roughly, you should think of it as an operation. Well, the, as, a, as a kind of a binary operation. I think uh, so it, where the two things are a section of the tensor product. I'm supposed to. Uh, so the, uh, the point is this: uh, the sheaf on x squared is naturally invariant. 
respect to the with respect to permuting the coordinates, switching the coordinates, and in particular, anti-symmetry says that if I switch these coordinates and I apply this operation, it's negative. This That's what anti-symmetry says. So I'll leave it as an exercise to figure out what the Jacobi identity says. In particular, how to take like three things uh, and get something in here in three different ways. Uh, it, you know, it involves looking at the third power of the curve and complements of various diagonals. Combinatorics like this. It's a Lie algebra in some uh, pseudo tensor. So it's a, a AKA, it's a Lie algebra in some color diagram. Yeah, this the point is there's no this does not define a tensor. Right? There, there's a there's kind of a pseudo tensor uh, that where where these are the multi operations, pseudo binary operations. Um, so yeah, so it's, it, anyway, uh, very operatic algebras and such things is a notion that makes sense. Uh, so, so indeed, it is a, it is a Lie algebra in something. Um, uh, that's what I'm only want to say for the moment uh, about what a chiral algebra is. Now, this comes with a few other, uh, with a few cousins, uh, which is there's also a notion of the least star. Oh, sorry. Before I before I say that, so I don't know a. Chiral algebra. A is, uh, I want to say, ordinary or underived. What's a good word for that? You know, classical is a bad word. Uh, that means something else. Oh, like that's taken classical uh, parallel. That has to do with uh, what's that? Discrete. Is there an animated, an animated? Uh, is there is there animated terminology for, for the negation of oh, animated static? Static. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what else could classical mean? Oh, so the, it's a Poisson algebra, like a quantized. Like there's a quantization. Oh, oh, I see, I see. Uh, classical is supposed to be Yeah, yeah, yeah. Classical. Yeah. Uh, so it's static. Yeah, that's a. That's uh, it's static, so it's going to be a little bit of a funny condition. If when you shift by one, uh, that it lies in the heart. Uh, so, just as an aside, is that static parallel algebra? Uh, On A one equivariant with respect to G A are roughly the same as what's called quasi conforming with vertex algebras. Uh, there's a kind of a anyway. This is a, that's the sense in which this is a. Uh, this is kind of giving a geometric uh, approach to the theory of uh, vertex algebras, whatever those are. Uh, they involve the kind of uh, they involve the kind of formulas here to Nicolay's thought. Uh, this this is a way of dealing with them without all those formulas. Uh, What's that? You can wear the sheep. Like why the Yeah, the sheep is the sheep is just going to be D A Y. Oh, chip. Yeah, I'll explain later. Uh, yes, I will. Yes, I will explain the shift. Uh, uh, I thought it was. I thought that if a chiral algebra was, was static or classical or whatever, like it was actually the part means the corresponding commutative or corresponding factors you should with it shifted by one by plus. One. Anyway, it's, okay, whatever. <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, I think 
like if we take like a cavity. Yeah, 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 yeah that's like right. So let me, let me just, let me just explain the subtlety. Yeah. Yeah. Is that if you open balance and drain flow book, there is no shift by one. The difference is this. Uh, right. Their okay. upper star function, their pullback functor for these modules involves a shift compared to the correct, uh, compared to this one. So their functor is not this one. It's this one with a shift. It's they're using like the left T structures. Yeah, yeah. yeah. they're shifting the yeah. T structure. Yeah, it's so, right. Yeah. Yes, that's yeah. Right. It's, okay. Yeah. It's it's left versus right. Yeah, exactly. Uh, okay. So, uh, it's the, like it's the thing you need for both of these to be in the same for both of these to be in the same degree. That's another way of saying. Wait, but if it's shifted, wouldn't they be in different homological degrees? Yeah, no, no. Oh, anyway, there's, I'll explain. Uh, uh, I'll explain. It's the thing that, it's the thing that you need for another object that I will introduce in a minute to live in a single degree. Uh, okay, so, 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 so that's what this is. So now there's a, there's a kind of a cousin of this notion. Uh, so by the way, these are the things that uh, for which you can define conformal blocks. That's going to be the thing. There's a related notion called the least star algebra. So and we so so it's the same thing. It's also a demodulation. On the curve, with let me just say a Lie bracket. And I'll also write it the same way, and just more simple line. Just without without restriction to the complement of the diagonal. Same deal, and also this kind of Lie. Uh, the algebra structure. Uh, so a few remarks about this is that we have a natural map just coming from a junction, the box product. Uh, to this thing, which means that uh, there's a functor from uh, chiral algebras. So every chiral algebra uh, uh, is a least star algebra in particular. So maybe right away, I'll say something more about what this looks like later. Uh, this has a getting chiral. It has a left to join. Called the chiral envelope. Uh, uh, has a left joint called the chiral envelope, which uh, um, uh, I don't know. Star algebras, parallel algebras. So that's one thing. I'll uh, so anyway, it'll be it'll be you'll see why it will be useful. Uh, 
Uh, the other thing to note is that if L I'll switch to L is a least star algebra. Could have called it L there. Then well, our gamma from of L is naturally allele, is naturally a DG G allele. So this is essentially because I have the kun of by by the kun of So basically, if I take if I take my least star bracket, if I take this bracket here and just I apply cohomology on the left hand side, I get the tensor product, the two copies of the cohomology of A. On the right hand side, by by definition, I get just the cohomology of A. So this is a uh, Of that. Uh, right. So, so now I can use this to define, uh, to give the classical notion of normal blocks. And now I'm getting worried about my shifts. Uh, they have to be. Something. about that. Uh, so you can check if you take A to B like the dualizing, right? Because that should be. So the dualizing is an example, yeah. So indeed, oh uh, yeah, okay. But it, is, it, is it the dualizing or is it shift dualizing by minus one is the question, right? No, so it should be the dual, uh, well, just. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, oh, uh, anyway, okay, sorry. Uh, this won't be so important. Uh, so you'll see you'll see why I'm getting worried uh, about this. So the classical definition uh, is the following: if A is static, parallel algebra. Uh, on a, a prop on a projected curve. So we only define conformal blocks for projective curves. It's not a meaningful notion for um, for affine curves. Then uh, conformal conformal blocks. Oh, I don't know. I haven't found a good notation for this. So this, by definition, is the following. We take, this is our gamma. Um, uh, of, uh, you take A, you take the underlying least star, take X, you take a point on the curve, you take, So you take that fiber at some point. Yeah. Uh, this is supposed to be. This is supposed to be. This is supposed to be uh, in the heart, and so I think that that matches up. Uh, then uh, you take the fiber at the curve, and you take coin variance. Well, in this case, it's just going to be gamma of uh, with the Lie algebra, which is uh, you take this A sub Lie uh, 
and restrict it to the punctured curve. This is a Lie algebra. It naturally acts on this vector space, and you take the covariance. And for some reason, that's not entirely clear to me. You take the dual. This is what uh, this is the classical definition of conformal blocks. So this should this should. So, oh, it does not depend on a point or um, or any. No, it doesn't depend on the point. Uh, of course, that's a non-trivial fact. Uh, but is it some kind of work you could do for various points? Yes. Yeah. Well, so I'll give a I'll give a okay, What does it even mean? What's that? What does it even mean? This this thing? A x is gonna take So up. take a fiber. Yes. There's a this is a Lie algebra. It acts on it. This is a vector space. You take covariance with this Lie algebra. You take covariance with respect to this Lie algebra. Yeah, it's just the the dual of the vector space of covariance. Uh sorry, it is what it is. Uh it's a little bit weird. But you didn't explain where this action comes from, right? Oh um, no, it, it it comes from it, I did not explain where this action comes from. Yeah, let me just assert that there is such an action. Uh, you're right. I did not do that. Uh, Wait, but I, the definition explicitly depends. Oh on... no, I think it's okay because the whole thing is. Uh, no, I think that if you forget, if you if I just put Lee here, then you know by uh, anyway, it's not it's not hard. I'll leave it as an exercise, but it's not hard to see this action. Uh, play around. With, anyway, I just wanted to write this down. For two reasons. One, so you see what a terrible definition this is. Uh, and two, uh, because this should look this should look like the like the this uh, M out from Nikolai's. Uh, uh, so what we're going so what I'm going to explain now is a, is a kind of a more conceptual approach to this, and also and also that gives a derived version. Goes wrong with uh, fine curves. Um. Well, because it's not fine dimensional. Oh well, this is this will often not be finite dimensional. I mean, I don't know. It's it's like very infinite dimensional. Okay. It's like more infinite dimensional than just infinite dimensional. Uh, it's the dual of an infinite dimensional vector space, right? Yeah. Well, well, this thing is still. So this thing has a, so like when you this dual this thing has a filtration. So the thing that's special about uh, proper curves is that in that case, this thing has a filtration. Well, essentially, because this thing has a filtration by the by the neighborhood filtration at this point, uh, and um, this filtration will have. So this thing will not be finite dimensional, but the associated graded will be. Each of the associated graded will be finite dimensional. So so you can kind of make sense of the dual in that. So the dual is not such a crazy thing to do. Uh, that's the thing that will fail for, uh, for an app. Is that the, the associated graded pieces will no longer be a finite dimension. Thank you. Uh, all right. So, Elias and Grenfell. Is uh, introduced. A derived version of this version of this. Uh, and the idea is like this. Is that given a higher algebra? We can do the following. Uh, given a higher algebra, okay, consider. The following thing. So, what, so what B, B A shifted by one. There it is. Uh, and so this gives us you know, rewrite it in terms of B. Uh, and what? So now. 
I'll just be first group two. This we define as the fiber of the map. Um, or B or B. So the way the shifts work is that this is a uh, this is what my uh there definitely should be no shift no right? shift by minus one yeah because like this B can be for example the dualizing complex. In which case A would be the dualizing complex should be by minus one, like puts them going to three zero. Uh, so the chiral algebra itself is really in the heart. Uh okay, sure. <laughs> anyway, sorry. Um, <laughs> anyway, there's anyway, yeah. There is this discrepancy. Yeah. This is where it shifts by one. Um, If you take A to B, the dualizing complex shifted by minus one, so it's placed in homological degree zero, then you have the connecting homomorphism. That's the early bracket. If you just take A to B the dualizing, then you yeah. just map it. Agreed. Yeah. Great. We did so. Uh, uh, yeah, exactly. So so let's take so this is going to be so this is some D module. So this is some D module on X squared. Uh, so let's rewrite it. So we have a triangle. So, but it, it has a, here is a, so let's, let's analyze. Oh, uh, what this is. What we have. By construction, if I take, if I restrict along the diagonal, so what happens if I restrict along the diagonal? Well, I have a triangle. This V2 mapping to J lower star, J upper star, mapping into this delta lower star, uh, shifted by one. Well, so when I restrict to the diagonal, I still have a triangle. So this guy, this maps to zero because uh, because the restriction of something coming J okay, and and delta upper shriek of delta lower star is the identity. Uh, it's shifted by D to one. Therefore, shriek restriction of this is isomorphic to this B. Secondly. If I look at the restriction uh, away from the diagonal, uh, this has the property. Well, again, it maps to whatever it is. It maps to uh, the restriction to the diagonal here, and then uh, and then the cone of that is a restriction of the diagonal of this third term. But the restriction to the diagonal uh, away from the diagonal of this third term is zero, uh, and so this gives an isomorphism. Uh, like this. But this is called the factorization. And so this uses nothing. This uses just the operate, just the um, just the, just the chiral operation. But the chiral operation is supposed to sat is to, supposed to satisfy the Jacobi identity and so on. So using Kobe identity anti symmetry, we build in a similar way the pen inside of the modules of X to the N for every N. Uh, such that for every diagonal embedding,
Uh, again, I write such that we're in this homotopical world. So I'm being very wishy-washy. This really is part of the data that comes with the data. Uh, such that uh, for every, well, actually, such that, actually, this is okay. For every diagonal embedding uh, from like X to the M, uh, X to the N, it's called this delta, delta upper three, but you're restricted, you get, you get the thing on, uh, on the previous one, and J, J, upper three of B, and uh, this is isomorphic to J upper three of the M tensor power. So where J is X to the N minus all diagonals. Oh, oh, whoops. Shouldn't have done that. It's the same way. So for open embeddings, these are the same thing. But let's stick with uh, uh, Okay, yeah. So we so we get like a, a sequence of sheaves. Uh and in fact, uh and in fact, what uh, Balinson and Bernfeld show is that one can describe this 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 structure describes having having such a collection of sheaves of D modules together with this data is equivalent to having a chiral I mean, you can see how to do this. Like, you want to reconstruct the chiral bracket. Well, you look at the second power, and then you look at the open closed decomposition. Uh, by the by the diagonal and the and its complement, and that gives you a, a, the appropriate chiral operation, and then the rest of it encodes the Jacobi identity together with its homotopy. So let's uh, let's so let me formalize this a little bit. Uh, to formalize this idea, oops. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I want to. I want to. I want to get to this. So to, to, to formalize this idea, uh, they introduced the run space. Well, uh, like this. It's the free stock. Free stock. They do it. Of not everything. And then substance. But, uh, uh, what this means specifically, let me give you two definitions. At the free stack, this is the formal co limit over. Uh, Uh, over the category of finite non-empty sets and projections between them of just powers of X. That's, that's version one. Uh, also, run space of X of S, this is equal to uh, a set of finite non-empty subsets of uh, uh, X of S. Uh, so I don't know, let me, uh, I hope no one objects. Let me let me be in the world of derived algebraic geometry. So this might be a group void. Uh, and so to fix that, say I zero. This is the uh, uh, this is the this is the what the S points of this R is also the same as the co limit in three stacks of the uh, of this uh, this thing. Two descriptions of it. Uh, 
yeah, it's a little surprising. Uh, or what it's worth, it's a little surprising that this thing ends up being discrete, even for derived rings, like that this co-limit expression is into that thing. Uh, okay, so finally. Definition is the factorization algebra. Yes, the module. The the run space. The run space, uh, together with. Uh, with factorization isomorphisms so we have this is a Hope it's clear what the notation means. So this is an open. This is a subfunctor, uh, consisting of pairs of subsets over there that are that are disjoint. Uh, uh, yeah, that's right. That are disjoint, uh, and this is just taking taking two subsets to their union, and so the factorization isomorphism is that if I pull back. Uh, my D module with respect to uh, this, uh, let me call this J here, uh, uh, with respect to, oh, uh, with respect to union, then that's the same thing as this J over star of, of kind of two copies. Of so this should look eerily familiar uh, to this, and I should say plus higher coherence. So a good way of uh, encoding this is that if you look at the category of D modules on the run space, this has a pseudo tensor structure, essentially given by this thing. Uh, and this, this being a factorization algebra is being a co-algebra respect to that pseudo tensor. The genuine tensor structure, right? Uh, I think not for when you restrict a disjoint. Uh, I think so, it's just direct image along. Take Box product. Oh, too. sorry. Yes, yes. Sorry. It's yes. sorry. Uh, it's it's like the in in in, in sorry. Let me let me let me, let me say again. It's uh, there is an honest tensor structure here, just just given by you know you pull back and you put you, you pull back along the two projections and you push forward uh, along this thing that does define a genuine tensor structure indeed. Uh, so what I want is is coalgebras for this tensor structure. Um, oh, I guess I guess just that, yeah. Uh, satisfying an additional condition. This is like a priori. Yeah, that's right. Yes, that's so the the algebra structure gives me a, indeed the algebra structure gives me a map, and I ask that this be an isomorphism. Wait, it's break time, but let me state. Uh, yeah, so uh, I guess unraveling, so it's so a D module on the ROM space, hopefully is clear from that presentation over there, is just a compatible system of D modules on every power, such that when you restrict it along diagonals, uh, you get back the uh, corresponding thing. Compatible system. So the theorem. theorem is that there's an equivalence uh, between factorization algebras and twice and uh, error algebras and now so and now 
definition viral homology. Translation okay. homology. Of the viral P. This is defined as our gamma on the run space max of this B superscript around So you build uh, and the, oh, I don't know, back in uh, conformal blocks, whatever call it, on A. This is isomorphic to the zero viral homology in A. So this is a somewhat non-trivial fact, but not a very difficult one. It's our gamma Duran. What's that? Our gamma Duran. Duran, yep. Um, oh, so this is the thing that, so this is the thing that we'll work with. Uh, all right, so we can we let's take a break now, and I guess all the fun stuff will be after <laughs> after the break. Sorry about that. Yes. Needed to needed to have uh, our uh, vegetables. Resume at five twenty-five. Welcome back. All right, thank you. Welcome back. Uh, so one last uh, one last assertion about this whole formalism. And then we'll get to some interesting geometry. So the, the key calculation. Let me, let, me, let me first start with a key fact is that the space wrong x is contractible. Everything is used to fail at the uh, is contractible. One way that this manifests itself is that, uh, oh, for instance, so we have this projection along with put forward point. We have this projection map to point, and then we have this function from vector spaces to D modules on the run space. Which is just constant D module is fully paid. That's the version. Of contractibility uh, that they want to use. Uh, yeah, the proof. I was gonna give a proof of this, but I don't think there's time. It's very, it's very nice. It's it's it boils down to the fact that if you have a topological space with a binary operation. That's homotopy. That's commutative up to homotopy, in the weakest possible sense, uh, and such that it's idempotent. Uh, then the thing is contractible. And in this case, you have such an operation. It's called union, because if you have a subset, uh, there's, a, there's an operation called union. You can take two, the union of two subsets. If you take the union of a subset with itself, it's itself. And so a version of the Ekman-Hilton argument uh, shows that this is contractible. Uh, okay, but this is, uh, so, so, so that's one thing. And the other is maybe let me state it as a theorem. Uh, is that this is kind of the key uh, thing that connects uh, all of this, uh, all of this formal nonsense uh, to this question about higher gen spaces, uh, which is that if L is a least star algebra, Then in this case, we have an explicit answer for what the higher homology of its higher envelope is. Uh, and the answer is that this is Lie algebra homology of the DG Lie algebra, this is the Durham homology on the curve uh, of this of this Lie algebra. Uh, now, well, I.
So given a given a Lie algebra, G uh better. So if you take some if you take some principal G bundle, uh there's a kind of a sheaf of Right. In the induced D module on uh, this Lie algebra, just to be a little bit more ambivalent about left versus right. Uh, so if you take a, a principal G bundle, there's a there's a kind of a quasi or incoherent or a split curve goes to the same uh, sheaf of Lie algebras uh, given by the given by the adjoint one, and take the induced D module uh, that naturally forms a least star algebra. Uh, so what we get is that the chiral homology of this guy dual is the is this infinite dot space of Bunchy. And uh, you can interpret all of those uh, funny residues Nikolai was talking about as kind of giving a resolution of computing the cohomology of these sheets corresponding to corresponding to that. That's that kind of a, uh, a chiral uh, explanation for where 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 all of that structure comes from. So really, it's all about uh, it, it's, it really boils down to this kind of formal fact that has nothing specifically to do with G bundles. Just a fact about we start the relationship between computing the chiral homology of a chiral envelope. Uh, so I should say this theorem. Uh, so so uh, this theorem really also boils down to the fact that the Ron space is contracted. Like it's a it's a it's a non-trivial fact, and the non-trivial input is the contractibility of the Ron space. For instance, notice that uh, if L is zero, uh, if L is zero, this precisely recovers the assertion that the Ron space is contracted. And in fact, you know. Modulus and formalism, the whole statement reduces to that. Okay, great. Uh, probably. So I can ask a big question. Yeah. The right hand side doesn't seem to have anything to do with three modules. But the left hand side is like, you know, it's defined in terms of uh, three modules. In the yeah. Space. Uh, yeah. Why is. SPS? <laughs> he, he kind oh, of explained right the rule of the jet space is the fiber the bridge operators look like. Yeah, that's right. Uh, well, no, that 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 D module and this D module, I'm not sure have structure have much to do with each other. Uh, uh, like that's not you know. uh no, it's because well it's because this thing is no, it's just formally because this thing is just the Lie algebra homology of this of like the cohomology of this Lie algebra, so like the Durham cohomology of this is the same as the coherent cohomology of this as a Lie algebra. Also, that's how this works. And just just for, just from uh, but in just just spaces there was no global section of the induction. What's that? In, in, in just spaces there was no global section. Well, well, there, well, there was well there was a cohomology of this kind without induction. Yeah. But it was coherent cohomology. The fact about induced D modules. Is that if you take the Durant cohomology of an induced D module, oh, it's the same as it's the, the same as the coherent homology of the reason we needed to induce a D module is to be able to build this thing. Also that uh, and so and, and this thing is the thing that's related to like powers and configurations. Oh, is this just a vector space for a Oh um, this is true as well. I knew it. This is true with whatever structure. Uh, it's, it's, it's true very strong. <laughs> like, and, yeah, and basically any structure you can reasonably put on either side. Uh, you see, I mean, I didn't talk about how this is a coil, so, uh, but it does have a natural structure. Of coil. Like, uh, sorry, I mean algebra. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And it, 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 I mean, it's related to the fact that if you take the universal enveloping algebra, the Lie algebra, that's not just an associative algebra, that's also a coil. For the same reason, this will have extra structure. That extra structure will exactly, uh, yeah, uh, will exactly be the match with this. So I want to globalize this. So I wanted to, rather than just describing the jet space at some particular point, I wanted to describe 
you know, the monad differential. So this, the idea is that this will give kind of a local to the local description of D marches. Uh, and so, well, to do that, I want to give another interpretation of this, geometric interpretation. On this description. Uh, of of uh, this of this chiral envelope of this Lie algebra. Uh, so so we so we can describe it just purely by geometrically. And for simplicity, let's assume that the G bundle is trivial. Let me do it at the trivial G bundle, and then I will. Uh, uh, and then I will say say a little bit more about what to do at other. So remember, this is where this is where geometry of bungee really will come into play, which is that we have the affine dress model. E Brasmanian. So G, this is the moduli space. Of principles, P bundles, uh, and maybe let me say some x. X here is going to be a point on the curve, uh, together with an isomorphism. Together with a trivialization away from our fixed point. So uh, the idea, the point is. That we can allow the points to move. So we can allow so 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 we can allow two things. First of all, we, there's no reason to consider one point. We can consider any closed substance, so multi, finitely many points. The way this Zariski topology works, that only gives us access to finitely many points. Finitely many points. instead of just one. And secondly, uh, we can allow the points to move uh, and to collide. Uh, so, uh, so in other words, if you have some, well, let's, let's first think about the case of one point. If you have one point, what would this mean? So like as a, as a stack, you have an S point of the curve, an S point would be an S point of the curve, a G bundle on X times S, uh, and a trivialization away from the graph of S. So a, a, a graph of the map from S to X. Uh, the reason I wanted to say it this way is because the other obser key observation I want to make is that this complement of the graph doesn't really depend on the map. It only depends on the map up to the reduced part of this of the scheme. So in particular, this will, as, as you let points vary, this will have a connection along how the points vary. So this defines the Ron over the Ron space. space. So explicitly, the S point. Point here. The data one think of the Ron space, reduced point Ron space to the bundle uh, on X times S. Three a trivialization minus uh, minus the graphs uh, the point is this makes sense even though it's only a map of that reduced part uh, with with a trivial bundle the open part only only depends on I, 
find it inside. Maybe that will be a little bit more clear. So this is this is this is this is this is what the functor is. Uh and uh the point is that this uh so again over the run space this is a. Uh, uh, so, so we can pull back to, for instance, powers of curves or something. Curve run uh, is a factor, what's called a factorizable space. This means that, you know, if you took a look at curve, you run times over the run space. Run, there's a natural isomorphism being a little bit vague, but hopefully it's clear. And the reason for this is, uh, sorry, I think this was not discussed, right, in this factorization process. Okay, so this is this is this is this is not. I think this is not evident from the description. So let me give the idea of why this is true. So the key point. I'm going to give a careful proof, but the key point is this: that if you have a G bundle on X and a trivialization away from two points that are distinct. I can do the following. I can build uh, uh, so so last P one is just P and I can build another G two uh, such that E two restricted to X. Well, minus uh, minus y is just p one restricted to x minus one. Then p two restricted to x minus x is isomorphic to p three. So the point is that they're, they're, they, I can glue these because their intersection is the restriction to the complement of both points where I use this trivialization. So in other words, uh, and I can go backwards. So this is so so notice that this uh, so so this gives you the data. So this data start. So this data is equivalent to the data of two bundles, a pair of G bundles, and each trivialized away from one. Uh, and then Sorry, Now I regret the way I wrote it. So the point is, just by this regluing construction, uh, there there is this kind of equivalence. This gives an isomorphism. This 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 is this is what's responsible. If you unravel uh, the situation, this is what's responsible for that uh, for that isomorphism. 
And so the point is, so it has a kind of a non-linear version. And then we can try to linear. Uh, so consider uh, so we have uh, so we have so we also have a kind of a, a unit section from the wrong space to the corresponding space. So it projects, but there's a section. Yes? And the section is where your bundle is trivial and your isomorphism is also trivial. Uh, and so just uh, consider B. B, well, here's what you can do. Uh, you can push forward dualizing complex. So this is so this is then a D module. Uh, this is in the world, I don't know, this is D module. We'll do something funny. We'll do the, we'll take delta functions of the identity, and then we'll take coherent homology in this direction. The star in Importantly not, we're not gonna mod out by, uh, we're not just gonna look at flat sections, we're going to look at all sections, all relative sections here. Um, uh, and uh, what was Ron Durham? The Durham space of Ron. Uh, I think I regret. Oh, let me get rid of it. Uh, quite. I should have. I should have adopted the convention the people. There's only the Durham space. Never going to consider. We're never going to consider uh, anything else. Okay, so so we can so this this is a factorization element precisely because because of this factorization property the yeah, fi first one uh, and the claim is that this factorization algebra is is the is the factorization algebra that exactly corresponds to the chiral envelope. Of our favorite Leo. This is, in this case, this is for the trivial bundle. If we want a non trivial bundle, the thing we could modify is there was a choice of this. this one. We could have looked at a twisted version of the app address finding where we identify a way from a point not with the trivial bundle, but with some other fixed reference bundle. And that would have given. I would have given that. I'll, I'll return it. So the so this kind of, this this gives a geometric description of what this chiral algebra is. In particular, we know that again, it's chiral homology uh, computes the uh, the the fiber of different properties free dual into the chat space. Oh, uh, okay. So motivated by this, let's define a global version. So there's a kind of a more global version. There's a, as I said, if you, I wanted at other points, uh, I, I would need to modify this trivial bundle by a, a, another fixed reference. But we want the point to move. So we can consider this in two variables. Uh, and this is what's called the, this is what's called the Hecke stack. Uh, yeah, by the way, I should, I should say maybe that this is also uh, the same thing as kind of P lower star uh, of the dualizing complex of this Parsimonia formally completed as a unit section. 
nice interpretation of what this is. Again, so this follows from that same computation with the Durham stacks that we did in the beginning of a fiber product. So Durham stacks giving a formal neighborhood. Also, hidden like the pillows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's it, it's literally the calculation that I did. Um, okay, so now we're good. Okay, we're doing okay. So now uh, we can define define the Hecke stack. which is. Uh, Sabran, this lives over the drum space of Ron. To be, so well, it's the same way. An S point, S point, is Ron, it's an S point, S mapping at the, the drum space of Ron. Two is now it's two G bundles. Uh, Three is an isomorphism between them sorry, on B bundles on X times S, and an isomorphism between them on X times S minus the union of the, once again, the pi of the graphs of the pi. It's clear, so it's exactly the same way, except we're not identifying with a trivial bundle, we're identifying with another bundle, which we're allowing it to vary. Uh, so now if we fix, so if we fix the second one, remember, this is, this is responsible for the, for the chiral algebra, whose chiral homology computes the jet, the free dual of the jet space. The fiber of differential operators at that point. So hopefully, this is suggestive. Uh, so we have. We also have the unit section. Yeah. Again, just take both. Just take everything to be trivial. And both bundles are trivial. The isomorphism is the identity. Uh, and what? So this, and we have. Let me get this right a bit. So we have kind of two projections to find G. G. Uh, e, Q. So this defines. So so pull back, push forward. A slightly non-trivial fact. Let me not completely align. Defines a monad on Bungie. So we can study equivariant sheaves with respect to this thing. Uh, that's not quite what we want yet. What we want, uh, what we want is the uh, uh, land. So consider the formal completion. I call it a bit now. Um, to be the formal completion. Formally completed at the unit set. So it's the ones that are infinitesimal close, just like here. And so again, we have uh, uh, e. You have G. G. And now let me state the theorem. Uh, is that there's an actual equivalence on oh, no. 
the end of G of this kind of induction by what we just said, B bar G. So by this, I mean the monad of induced to D bar to, to D modules with this for free lower star with, with this. Okay, let me try to sort of so this is this is kind of a funny statement because what this is saying is that well like this is responsible for what it means to be a D mod on the moduli space of G models. So oh so what is the Durham stack perspective tell you? It tells you that to be a D module, well, on anything, to be a D module on X means you have a sheaf on X and you have an isomorphism uh, between, um, if you, so if you pull back to the formal neighborhood of the diagonal, if you have kind of two points that are infinitesimally close, you have to identify the file at those points. That's what this is saying. On the other hand, let's ponder what it means to be equivalent to be to be a, a, a module for this, what it means is the following. Well, first of all, you're a sheaf on Bungie, and what is the equivariance? The equivariance is this: is that for every collection of points, uh, you have a collection, not all, but a collection of, of other G bundles that are infinitesimally close. They're infinitesimally close and identified away from those points, uh, and then you kind of integrate over all the choices of those points. And it turns out that you, you just get back the, uh, this, this earlier equivalence. It's some kind of a, I don't know, a good way of thinking about it is some kind of a formal contractibility of some kind of rational maps. Uh, so anyway, the fact that uh, anything like this, this extra data exactly washes that. Oh, OK. I'm just the monad structure on the right-hand side, it comes from the Three-point structure on HECA somehow, right? Um, there are a couple of ways of describing it. So, so HECA is a group way that if I put times around around, right, that would have a, a structure. You can so there are I two there are two ways of saying that this is a monad. Uh, one way is to use the is to use the extra operation on the run space, which is this union. Uh, using this union, you can you can see you can see what to do, right? Because you know if you want to compose at different points, you just take the union. And, the, and then integrate out. Uh, another, another maybe a, a slightly more, uh, another good way of seeing it is seeing that it comes from actually what's called the unital run space. And then that automatic. In either case, it is using the structure on HECA, right? Oh, sorry, no, the, that, the group of, yes, it is using the groupoid structure on HECA, but it's a little Plus bit more HECA. than that. Right. So, so HECA is obviously a groupoid. I mean, HECA is, you know, like, um, it's like, Anyway, it's like bungee on the universal curve times over bungee of the universal punctured curve with bungee. I mean, it, it's pretty clear what the quotient over the run space is. Uh, anyway, so so this is the so this I propose as the as the global version of this uh, of this equivalence. Okay. So I want to draw some consequences. This would you know this is nice, but okay. So what? Uh, uh, now you can tell us what functions on Bungie are. Now, I will, now I'm going to tell you what functions on Bungie are, yeah. So, uh, so we have this, uh, so we have this F and cross money. Oh, well, sorry. We have, so, so, so this Appian Grassmannian over the run space maps down to Bungie. And the way you should think of it is it's a better version of uniformization than the Grassmannian of Bungie. So there are two ways in which it's better. So one kind of slightly silly way that it's better is that it works for all reductive groups, not just uh, not just semi-simple ones. Uh, and two is, well, uh, is that it's really kind of the fibers are contractible. So the theorem of Kate square is said the following. It can be formulated in this way, uh, is that if you look at D modules on G, 
um, which are which are equivariant, not with respect to not with respect to this one. That would be d modules, but with respect to the whole thing. Uh, that this is actually isomorphic to back. That this is that there's not that, that all of them are constants. Of course, that the the equivalence is well. These are like here to here is just pull back the constant one, and from here to here, well, you take the fiber and Uh, so this is equivalent to this is equivalent to a couple of different statements. Essentially equivalent to that if you have this applied Grassmannian mapping to fun G, that the uh, kind of the contractibility of the fibers, which is that this functor D modules of fun G, the G modules on this whole. Wrong version of the affine Grassmannian is fully faithful. There's some diagram space to see that those are equivalent statements. Uh, and uh, this is more or less an equivalent to contractibility. Uh, of rational maps, you can define a kind of an algebraic free stack of rational maps uh, from the curve to the group. Because, well, that's essentially the fiber over here. Um, okay, so we have this kind of result for D modules. Uh, uh, which is correct. So that's that's really the way it's this fact that this is fully faithful is really uh the way that this is superior at looking at over all of the run space because you can you can embed it, you can embed sheets, but even better, yeah. By the way, one nice consequence of this that's surprising. So already using already using this, I can tell you a surprising fact of Bungie. So Bungie is a is a stack that's not quasi compact, it's huge. Uh, on the other hand, this tells you that there's a well-defined functor of compactly supported homology. Namely, because so this this Bergeron behaves like a proper thing. So you pull back, and then you take kind of compactly supported homology on the on the FN Grassmannian, and you see that this is exactly the left adjunct to the restriction. So like the fact that there's a there's a well-behaved functor of compactly supported Supported homology for such a huge stack is extremely surprising. Um, so another two for contractibles. What's that? Oh, uh, I no, I don't think so. Uh, you can see it from miraculous duality. No, I don't think because because for quasi compact stacks, it's not true. You're saying it's like it's, you need a proper quasi compact. Stack. The, the, the the pieces are not proper. Like it, like in some sense, it behaves like something proper. I mean, not quite. It's not the same as just cohomology, but there is a well-defined on all of D modules. There's a well-defined. So the term not proper refers to right? Oh uh, yeah. Oh uh, well. Uh no, I think mock proper is when the push forward actually when it's actually when it's actually equal to Durham cohomology. Uh, if I if I if I remember right. I think because it's something like BG would be more proper, but I think there also it's that this vertical homology exists, but it's different. Well, anyway, let's uh, just close this conversation, especially since I'm a little bit over time. I want to get this punch lines. I'm almost there. So now combining the two theorems. This one and that one. What you learn is a kind of a remarkable, a, a, a kind of a somewhat surprising fact. That you can prove uh, that this statement is true, that this, this statement is true on incoherent sheaves as well. So it's some kind of like O contractibility, although not quite, it's a little bit weaker. Than, uh, 
O contractibility, then like coherent contractibility of the space of rational mass. Oh, uh, but let me well, let me just in two words say the idea behind how behind how to use these two statements to prove this. So the idea is well, you're trying to look at uh, well the to, to prove the statement, it's enough to prove that the functor of induction from incoherent trees on Bungi to this equivariant category is given by you take global sections and then you take uh, and then you re restrict them. You take the corresponding constant. Uh, that would do it. And so the way you do that is the, the point is you induce from an incoherent sheet uh, to this whole groupoid in two steps. First, you induce to the formal completion. And that's the same as by the theorem, that's the same as inducing to a D module. And then this formal completion of the unit section is a kind of a normal groupoid. And when you quotient by this normal groupoid, this exactly gives you the, the, the Durham version of the same groupoid. So you can you can identify induction for this thing in two steps. First, you induce to this kind of infinitesimal version of the Hecke, which corresponds to inducing to D modules, and then induce in D modules to this, which by this theorem is the, is the monad you want. This is kind of the rough idea uh, of the argument, the corollary of this, again, by some formal uh, nonsense, is that well, I want to say, I'd like to say that uh, the same kind of thing, that this, if you, if you restrict on incoherent sheaves from the Affin Grassmannian to Bungie, that that's fully faith. I don't quite know that to be the case. Honestly, don't know if that's true or not, but this, this does not seem to be strong enough to prove that at least. But what it is strong enough to prove is that when you restrict to the subcategory of perfect complexes, this is full of Star from perfect complexes on G to complexes at the Grassmannian on perfect is fully paid. Oh. So now, what does this mean? In particular, well, I promised, uh, I promised to give you, to tell you, well, for instance, what is the cohomology of Bungie. Well, now this gives a this gives a formula, which is I, which is that well applied to O. This just gives you O or an incoherent world omega. Uh, so. Uh, Say this so so the corollary uh, is that this uh uh gamma g oh this is the same thing as our gamma on the upline grassmannian e lower star. You write it in two steps. So it's the chiral homology of uh, all of omega okay implicitly I'm using the fact uh, that this is a this is a factorization of the extra structure uh, is that this is a factorization algebra for the same reason that this was is because the Grassmannian Gress, has this factorization. Uh, and so in so here, so we can build factorization algebras, which are not just uh, not just on the formal completion, but coming from the whole Affin Grassmannian. So uh, using the fact that this is a factorization algebra in an essential way, you can you can show that if G is uh, semi-simple. Um, 
So the, the reason that you the, the reason that it's important to know that it's a factorization algebra is because well there's always a map like this and to show that it's an isomorphism is enough to just show it on the fiber at one point and then factorization will imply that this is an isomorphism on factor on factorization so that's that's the way in which the structure is useful is it actually lets you uh, deduce this so in in this case in this case well <laughs> our gamma so in this case, the global functions is just k. And that's, again, just a contractibility of the Roman space. So there are no non-constant global functions in this case. Oh, well, so let me take another two minutes to say the, uh, a slight generalization of this. Oh. So, which is this? Which is this WCW business? Uh, so this is the so, so this is the kind of the WCW chiral algebra at level zero. So in general, there are other levels. Sorry, that, that's different from the Durham homology, right? That's What's that? That is different from Durham homology. But, but that's going to be this is this is global functions. Yeah, this is just holomorphic global holomorphic functions. Oh. The wrong cohomology. Uh, oh yes, that's right. But that's a yeah. uh, Also, well, you well, you don't need you don't need this thing. You can use it to like this exactly using this thing. You you get the, you can get the Atiyabod formula for the Durand. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, somehow that's less impressive, I think, because. Uh, I mean, I'll tell you why, because sort of almost obviously the homotopy type of bunch G, because you're dealing with a curve, is the same as the homotopy type of like homotopy classes of maps from the underlying like homotopy type of the curve to BG. And, you know, that's sort of right away you're in the standard techniques. Uh, yeah, the reason that the, the thing that's special about curves is you can think of these as holomorphic uh, G bundles. And one way of Thinking of holomorphic G bundle is like a topological G bundle with a del bar connection, with del bar flat connection. And for curves, flatness is the vacuous condition. So, so the space of del bar flat connections is contractible. That's why it's just ordinary topological. So, anyway, that's essentially the idea of one. So, just, I mean, that's a really great result, but just that calculation alone is, uh, uh, Tia and Bob did it too. Um, all right, so level, level. So, so suppose suppose they have a level kappa for G. So let me say what a level is. So in the case, so if G is like if G is simple, yes, simple. And simply connected. Level is the same thing as an ad invariant um, symmetric by linear form. The Lie algebra, oh, in general, it's something more complicated. In particular, the, 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 this kind of thing always does give you just one of them. Just, uh, then just this. So this gives two things. One is a what's called a factorizable line puzzle. Now, kappa on oh. Factorizable line bundle, uh, L kappa on, uh, uh, on 
this f n Grassmannian. Um, so, so I hope it's more or less clear what that means. I don't think I have time to give a definition. It's a line bundle such that when you restrict to the disjoint part, it's isomorphic to the tensor problem, the, the box tensor problem of itself. Uh, and I'm going to send this to uh, kind of a global version of it. A line bundle. But G, uh, 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 a, a line bundle on but G, which is kind of well, what you might call this line bundle of non abelian theta functions. I'll, I'll say maybe why that's what it's reasonable to call, and such that uh, this L kappa is the pullback of this. Uh, and so, well, now this is going to be very anticlimactic. Uh, so, so yes. Yeah, so by the way, that uh, this uniquely describes L cap and what I just what I just asserted because the functor on perf, which this is, is fully big. There's a unique such. Um, uh, and so, so the. W Z W chiral algebra kappa. Uh, I don't maybe let me state it as a theorem. Uh, uh, due to I guess R, maybe some other people, is that the W Z W chiral algebra uh, at level kappa identifies with. Uh, with this kind of int, int propose. What did I call the solution? I think on my lower part. Yes, well, uh, this L kappa i is the math from the, I think I call it something I don't know. Oh, right. Uh, yeah. Well, there are two different keys. Is the problem? Sorry, sorry, but oh, oh, here it's p. Uh, maybe should I should I rename that one to pi? Sorry, I'm really there's not so much. Oh no, this is this is p. That's what's that? Oh yes, that's right. Same you know. This yeah. no, these are different. <laughs> no, this is the projection oh, yeah, the space. Just this just is the projection of the module. There are two. So this is I, this is P. Uh, and so well the, the corollary of all of this is that the full chiral homology. A G kappa. This has a anyway. This uh. This, so when I should say so. Let's say if it's semi-simple and simply connected. If the if the level is uh, not negative definite, then uh then this is what's called the then this is the, then this in particular is a static chiral algebra, uh, and is what's called the maximal integrable quotient of the kappa. The cat's movie was the thing for uh, the distributions the identity. There's an obvious map from that to this one. It's at the level of an H zero. It's obviously surjective, and it's sort of responsible for what are called integrable representations of the cat's movie. Yeah. Right. So it's, it's like factorization modules for that thing. Part of the integral modules for the integral kappa. Uh, it, it's not enough. I think not quite. Uh, I don't think it's well. It's um, 
the corresponding statement for Cassimedi representations would be true if you use like the formal completion instead of yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Sorry, maybe 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 that's right. Uh, that's sorry, I'm a, yeah, anyway, sorry, I'm a little bit hesitant. Um, there's some well, there's also some subtleties about what you mean by representations in these cases. Anyway, oh, so yeah. let me so let me at the very least there's some issues like that. So let me let me. But uh but anyway, I mean, there are, you know, people that, I don't know, it's called, also called the, like, basic representation. It's, in particular, also a representation of the cast. And it's like the basic representation of level kappa. And so what this says is that the chiral homology of this thing is uh, a, okay, this is isomorphic to the compactly supported homology on G of this L. Alpha. Um, and so, well, this, and so, and in particular, the, in particular, so just like for D modules, there's compactly supported cohomology on, on our chiefs. Well, the dual of this, which is the conformal blocks, this you can identify as not compactly supported, but ordinary cohomology. G uh, with um, coefficients in the dual. Anyway, so for kappa, uh, uh, so 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 for kappa non, I guess I should have said non-positive depth. There's a mi implicit minus sign happening. The H zero statement is kind of the classical statement identifying uh, the H zero statement is the classical statement identifying conformal blocks. So the H zero of this is conformal blocks now with uh, with with global with just global sections without the R uh, of this lambda. So the assertion is that this is true. Now we know that this is also true for higher chiral homology. Uh, and maybe. The last thing I will say is that this is like, in many cases, this is pretty explicit. For instance, if G is SLN, uh, this line bundle, uh, so then, then kappa is just a number, simple and simply connected, uh, and this line bundle is just a power of the determinant, the line bundle of the determinant. Straightforward calculation. On the force moduli stack, space is like, corresponds to the divisor, which is that if you pick a, line bundle of degree G minus one, it's all vector, it's all kind of, so SLM bundles such that when you tensor by this line bundle, it has this defined just like the fatal complex. That's where the name comes from. Okay, I think I'm, I've well, went well over my a lot of time. Is there any questions? So it is like this version with the A J A the kappa has a like simple distribution as a D model and we like as you gave here for the most recent version. Just one again. Sorry. Like like for a case where where you take like a, just not twist by a line bundle, you describe the So kappa is you want to take kappa to be zero. Yeah. No, so I'm saying if, if kappa is zero, you have a simple distribution of this. Oh, this is just omega on rank, right? That's right, yeah. Either a simple description of... Uh, I mean, no, it is what it is. It won't be one dimension. I mean, sometimes it's zero. Sometimes it's, sometimes it's zero. Uh, uh, it could be, sometimes it's derived. It's like non-derived. Kappa is like, I guess, non-positive definite, the way I've set things up. And then it's just... In, uh, so the description, I mean, the description is... I, I don't know another way to say it other than... Uh, you know, it's it's in concentrated in degree zero, and it like a, it's the kind of what's it called the basic level K representation of the affect attribute. So like, is it going to be like regular polynomial? Like, is it going to be oh sort of oh oh uh, uh. uh. so yes, it will certainly be a regular holonomic. Dimensional fibers, right? Sorry, no, 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 never mind. 
Never mind. I, 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 yeah, I don't know. Uh, it, indeed, it could have. I mean, in, in general, it will have infinite dimensional factor. I mean, already, yeah. It is. It is. It is what it is. It's like you're taking sections of some random line bundle and rest on it, right? So it's it's like maybe there's some kind of relative bot type yeah. description. Yeah. No, sorry. I, it, it, sorry. Yes. I do know the answer here. It will not be a regular. Uh, the reason it will not be a regular homonymic is because it's not, as a, as a chiral algebra, it's not a commutative pair. If you have a static uh, chiral algebra that's a uh, regular holonomic, then that's the same thing as an E2 algebra. So regular holonomic um, chiral algebras are the same thing as E2 algebras. And those that are static are the same thing as commutative, commutative algebras. And such a thing is not. Therefore, it cannot be regular and polynomial. Yeah. So in that world, the natural shift is by two just one. As opposed to one or kind of big e kind of e minus. Yeah, I mean all of these things kind of look, I mean it's like a well, it's like some quotient of an induced D module for the building algebra. Yeah. Are you using this full? You're using this corollary that's full principle as the you know, star on. Yes, that's right. Sorry, the corollary is the core is is of the corollary. So again, because you want to compute, like you start with L log here. One operation is compute its homology by the by the corollary. That's the same thing as pull back and compute its homology. Uh, but then once I pull back, I can compute the cohomology in a different way by first pushing forward to here and then computing the cohomology. And when I push forward to here, I get exactly this. And the cohomology of the, of the result is exactly the chiral cohomology. That's the game. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. The corollary is the that corollary. That's It's related, but can, can you compute, uh, say, the crystal and homology of RNG in both of the cases? It's for the motivation for the. So I don't know. Um, it's a good question. Uh, I mean, I guess the expected answer is that it's not going, it's going to be the same as the. I don't know. You, I think you have to believe in independence of L for that. So, so gay square Lurie compute the tall homology. So, I mean, the, the, the answer should be the same. I don't know. I, I, I mean, I have to think through this formalism to make sure that, uh, that works. I mean, one, uh, one positive, so, uh, so that, that only has to do with this theorem. And one maybe positive result in that direction is that this contractibility this contractibility of the space of rational maps is kind of true motivic. Yeah. So that's, I think that was Elden's thesis. Operating. Can you get by a one there? Yeah. I know. That's why I didn't say it in one. But maybe but that's a kind of a positive uh uh Thank you very much.